Hello coders, in this episode of our 3D character controller we're going to talk about how we can get our camera colliding with objects in the scene. So let's go ahead and show you what our system is going to provide for us and then we'll talk about how we're going to implement that system. Okay, so here if I move around with the character controller that we've been working with in the previous few tutorials you can see that it's colliding with these cubes um, nice and tightly and I can also tell the camera what I want it to collide with so I told it to collide with the floor so if I wanted to look at my player from this bottom perspective I wouldn't have any problems with shearing on the floor alright so it can also handle pretty tight spaces alright so if I go under here it collides with the ceiling I can jump you have this nice fluid collision happening I can go into even tighter spaces okay and no matter how, how tight the space is really we're gonna be able to see the player at all times now I don't have any sort of handling with how close we can get to the wall so I don't have the I don't have the target fading out necessarily uh, for this tutorial but if you guys want to know how to do that then let me know and I'll make a tutorial on that alright so what I've shown you so far is the collision aspect of this system however there's still another issue that we have to be concerned with which is occlusion so occlusion is uh, similar to collision however what happens with collu what excuse me what happens with occlusion is the view gets obstructed so the camera behaves like a collision happens and it moves forward on the player as you would expect so as you can see the camera clearly isn't going to collide with that pillar but the view will be obstructed so we move forward on the player okay so that's that's the occlusion aspect of this system and we're going to be talking about how we can solve the problem of occlusion and collision um, in this tutorial all right, so let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to implement this sort of system. Let's start by defining our goal, which is to handle collision and occlusion with as little shearing as possible. So let's talk about which, what each one of these underlying terms really means. Okay, so occlusion is uh, the example I just showed you guys with the um, game running, where we have maybe this pillar that comes in between our player and our camera's view, and we need to move forward if that happens. So here we don't have a collision. The, the camera isn't hitting anything, but its view is uh, being obstructed, so we have to move forward. This is, again, this is occlusion. Okay, and then we have collision, where our camera actually does hit something, and so our view is still obstructed, so we still need to move forward. Okay, so what, what I want you guys to think about is we're not going to tackle each one of these problems independently. It's actually a problem that can be solved with one solution where we're going to be determining if the camera can see the player and if a point on the camera can't see the player then we're going to move forward so here in this situation there's a point on the camera that can't see the player so we move forward and in this situation we, there's a point on the camera that still can't see the player so we're going to move forward so no matter uh, if it's collision if it's collision or occlusion we're gonna have that same issue and we're gonna have to move forward alright so here is shearing where you have our camera view we have our camera view right here and maybe there's a wall and we're able to see through that wall to where we see the open space we see the skybox uh, and so of course we don't want that to happen because it it really detracts from the realism of our games um, and it makes our maybe uh, really tough looking objects seem paper thin so we don't want that effect in our game so we want to limit uh, the amount of shearing as much as possible let's talk about some uh, definitions of the camera that we need to understand before we can start programming this so from our side view we have our view angle right here and we also have our clip plane so defined by this this green rectangle here we have our clip plane which is also the camera view okay so if we look back here this camera view is everything that is contained within this near clip plane all right and our clip plane has four points the the top right top left bottom right and bottom left okay and so we need to be concerned about those points whenever we're detecting collision or occlusion then we have our far clip plane which is what determines how far out into the world our player can see and everything everything between the far and the near clip plane is our view frustum which is everything uh, everything contained within this pyramid shape is what the player can see in the game okay so what we're going to be doing to detect collision is here we have our near clip plane okay so we're looking at it from a forward position if you look back here we're looking at this rectangle right here from a forward position 
we have a top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right clip plane, and then our camera's position. So these five points are what we really need to be concerned with. All points need to be able to see the player without any obstructions. Okay, so if you think back to our shearing example, what we had was we had a wall right here in this region that we could see, but we could see through that wall in this region. So what was happening in that case is these two clip points were going, were passing through that wall. And so everything, um, every that, that part of our clip plane was um, seeing the skybox. Okay, so what we do to handle this is we determine the, the points in space for each of these clip points and the camera's position. So we, we calculate these clip points and we draw ray cast from each one of these points to the player's position. And if there's an obstruction between any of those ray casts, then we move the camera forward. And this handles, collu uh, this handles collision and occlusion. All right, so again, all points must be able to see the player without any obstructions. Now what we need to do, our goal for this, is we need to find the XYZ clip coordinates with respect to the camera's position. So how do we do that? Okay, so we have this top-down view of our camera. And these white lines depict what, depict what the, the camera can see. We have our green near clip plane right here. And then we have this field of view angle. Okay, so the again, we're looking at this from top down. So here we have our z-axis and here we have our x-axis. So what we need to determine is, again, we need to, to determine how far in the x do we need to come over from the camera's position. And how far up in the y do we need to come with respect to the camera's position to get each one of these clip points. Okay, so to calculate the x, um, well, first let me let me explain this. Here's our z. This is our this is our camera's position, and here's our z distance. Z is equal to camera dot main dot near clip plane. Okay, so near clip plane is a value that we can actually set from the inspector and for our camera object. Okay, so that's pretty much given to us by default. It's something like 0 0.3 or 0 0.03. Uh, I can't really remember, but uh, regardless, that that clip plane, that near clip plane, is the distance from the camera's position to the near clip plane. So that's going to handle our z. Okay, so we always have our z. We always have our field of view, um, and since we're we're divvying this up into this triangle, it's actually going to be equal to field of view divided by two. All right, so to get x, what we can use, since we have our z and we have our field of view angle. We, to get our x, we can use a tangent function. So if you remember back to your math class from way back when, um, we have we, we can calculate we can calculate x by saying tangent field of view divided by two is equal to x divided by z. Okay, so x this this opposite over the adjacent. So again, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So our x distance over our z distance. And since we have z and we have our field of view tangent, we can say x is equal to tangent field of view divided by 2 times z. Okay, So we have our x distance, so we know how far we have to come over with respect to the camera's position. And we know how far in, so we know our, our distance away from the camera's position by our z. Now we need to calculate our y, so how far up or down do we need to move to get to each one of these clip points? And one of the things we have at our disposal is the camera's aspect ratio, which is equal to width over height, which is equal to x divided by y. And since we have our aspect and we have our x at this point, we can say y is equal to x divided by aspect. So at this point, we have our x, y, z clip coordinates. So how can we use these, these values to get each one of these clip points? Well, let's say we wanted to get the top left clip point. What we could do is say camera position plus a new vector 3, negative x, y, and z. Top right would be x, y, z. Bottom left would be negative x, negative y, z. And bottom right would be x, negative y, z. And so we're using these clip coordinates with respect to the camera's position at all time to fill our clip point array. And again, we're going to be drawing ray cast from each one of these points to our player's position. And if anything comes in between those ray casts, then we know we need to move the camera forward. All right? So here are some methods that we're going to be using to implement this system in, in our collision class. Okay, so we're going to define it. We're going to define a collision class and put these methods in it. We're going to have a collision detected at clip points method, which is going to be determining if something comes in between those raycasts that I was just talking about. We're going to have a method that updates our camera clip points. Okay, so this, as our camera moves around, remember, 
as our camera moves around, we're going to be having to calculate those x, y, and z coordinates um, constantly so we can have those arrays updated. So we update the camera clip points, and then we have our get adjusted distance with ray. So what this is, is it's going to return the distance that our camera needs to move forward. It's going to give us the minimum distance that our camera needs to move forward uh, before we stop running into a wall. Okay, And then we have a public void check colliding, which is just going to update a collision boolean. Now we're going to be using the collision detected at clip points within this, this method, and we're going to be um, updating our collision bool to determine if we need to move forward or not. Okay, so that's going to conclude the overview of how this system works and how we're going to go about implementing it. In the next couple tutorials, we are actually going to be writing the code to get this working for you guys. But as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.